Hello everyone and welcome to this next lecture. In this lecture, I am going to show you how to download the Texas Instrument Code Composer Studio from the Texas Instrument website. So all you have to do is open up any web browser. I am using Google Chrome but you can use anything and just let us write Texas Instruments Code Composer Studio. So this is already in my search history but this is what you have to look for that is TI Code Composer Studio. TI is just to make sure that you don't end up downloading another Code Composer Studio software from maybe some other supplier. So, let's change this to English. And let me open it in a new tab. So, as I already said, when you order your kit, that is your microcontroller kit, the, the box does come with a CD and that CD does have a version of Code Composer Studio. However, from my experience, that version of Code Composer Studio that is on your CD is usually much, much older than what you actually get on the website, right? The website usually has the latest version. You can also download an older version. But however, the version which is there on the CD may not be the latest one. So unless you have a very, very slow internet connection or you do not have an internet connection, I would always recommend come over to this website and download the latest version. So you see here, there is a download, uh, download link. We just come over here, download options, and here you have it. So you see here, the latest version is 12.1, right? And this is obviously quite, quite more advanced than what you have in the CD, right? So there are several, several links. For example, most often you depend, it decides what is decided, of course, deciding factor is your operating system, whether you're using Windows, Linux, or Mac OS. Though I am usually a Linux user, for the purpose of this course, I'm going to use Windows because most of electrical engineers do use Windows and therefore there is no need for other compatibility issues to appear just because I'm using another operating system, right? Now, there are many, many, for example, if you come over here, there is a single file offline installer, right? And there is also an on-demand installer. Now, the difference is in the size. If you look here, the size makes it very clear this is more than one gigabyte, right? But this is an offline installer and it has everything. In comparison, this on-demand installer is just 39, is just around 35 megabytes, right? Which is way smaller because it will actually install interactively only the modules you want. Now, I would not recommend this for a beginner, right? As a beginner, go ahead and install this really large one unless you really know what you're doing, you've used it before, then go ahead, you can use the on-demand installer. But I would always recommend that you install this if you are a beginner. So I'm gonna click on it. And this is a very, very long download, right? So, I will, let me see if it is done. Yeah, so as you see, it's going to take close to 13 minutes to 25 minutes. It's pretty long. So, I will pause this video and I will come back when the download is complete. So, the download is finally complete and when the download ends at least in my system it automatically closes the file is downloaded into the downloads folder but i have copied it to my f drive the reason is because my computer is pretty old and my c drive is almost full i would like to put all my dsp related software into the f drive so in the f drive i have created a dsp software folder and in that i have created a ti folder for everything related to texas instruments so this is where I have cut this zip file, which I've just downloaded. All right. Now, of course, this is totally optional. You can, of course, install it anywhere in your system. As long as it's successfully installed, that's not a problem. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to extract it. So as again, this sh extraction should not take too much time. What is important is that not only will I be saving my, so at least the 
downloaded file here, I'll also be installing the DSP, the Code Composer Studio into the F drive. Again, this is just my preference. You can use the default location of C drive program files if and that's perfectly okay with you. It's just that in my case, my C drive is almost full and if I install Code Composer Studio there, there'll be almost no space which essentially will slow down my system because Windows needs some amount of space in the C drive in order to be able to manage its own files. So, but again, this is nothing to do with DSP. This is just system management. And I am no fan of Windows. Unfortunately, Windows is not something I'm very fond of, nor do I have a lot of faith in. So, should be done soon. And also, this computer is quite old. So, the good part is that since even though it's been such an old computer, you can still install the latest version of Code Composer Studio and you can also do all your programming with such an old computer. So that's the good news. So should be done soon and it is done. So I can close this and just continue here. So you see here it has opened this file and inside this there are a lot of files. But most important, there is the CCS setup, right? This is the setup file for the Code Composer Studio application, right? So I'm going to double click on this to install it. And this is again going to ask you because this is Windows, it's going to ask you, do you want to install this app? And this is because this is not a native Windows application. This is a third party application. I will say yes, because I do want to install it. And this installation will also take a good amount of time. So depending on how slow or how fast your system is, you will see things like this. For example, in my case, it's just my system is almost seven years old. So therefore, it is just taking time to launch even the first initial page. And here it is. So initially, we'll have to do some configuration. And the license agreement, you can feel free to read it. I will just accept it because we have to use it. I don't, I don't want to start using command line or other features. So it will first check whether everything is okay. And it says antivirus check. We have detected you are running an antivirus software. May interview with the installation. Now, I would say it's not a big deal. I'm not going to disable it because antivirus is important and I don't want to be hit in any way during the installation. So I will not, I will ignore this message. So it says there was a pending reboot and this is just because as I said, I don't use Windows often and because I don't use Windows often, this is a really, this is almost a factory setting. And because of that, there are a lot of reboots, which I don't do, a lot of updates, which I don't do. So therefore, all these messages, you probably won't get. Now, as I said before, this is the installation directory. Now, the default installation directory is here in C drive. Now, this might be perfectly okay for you. If your C drive has a lot of space, like it has, you know, it is, let's say your C drive is 100 GB or so, then by all means, continue. You do not need to change it. In my case, my C drive is much smaller. The reason is because this is primarily a Linux computer. I have shrunk my Windows directly directory to the bare minimum, right? So I'm going to change this, but you don't have to. Okay. Now, let me come over here and let me pick the F drive, right? Now I'll just pick the F drive. I don't want to put it inside a smaller folder. Let it just install wherever it wants. So I'll just say F. Actually, it's set. No, I should probably say CCS because it may install everything here. So I will just say CCS. So it's just going to make sure that it can have, it has right privileges to this particular directory. That's very important. You must be able to, whichever directory you choose, you must be able to install it. If it is protected, that is, it's only, I mean, 
it's only the administrator who can install then in that case check with the administrator administrator if you can continue with it so again here look there is a custom installation there is a full installation so now the custom installation is recommended always use the recommended options in the beginning once you become an expert you can start playing around and having your own special installation but for now let's go ahead with the recommended options so you see here these are all the components that are there right now in this case what we have is specifically let's have a look at what we are we don't have msp we don't need simple x we do need the c2000 real time mcus right because what we are going to use is the piccolo microcontroller which is a tms320 f28069 and that is the 2000 series microcontroller now besides that i don't see any other device that we possibly could use right see these are all there are many many it's like the c55 all these there are many many of these which if you are using go ahead and install right if for some reason you think you might install you or you have it in your store by all means go ahead and install this so i will click on this and be done not responding I thought it's done so it's not responding again this is probably a slow system so this is why it probably said this is a recommended option because if you install everything you will end up with everything let's just wait to it now I will also install the Black Hawk debugger probes because Black Hawk is also sometimes the emulator used onboard emulator used with the microcontroller kits right so you see spectrum digital is anywhere there install the black hawk as well so please note are not supported so there is an x xds 510 debug pro and several others so we'll look at this later there's some these we don't use we don't use this anyway we are not using the 6000 generation nor are we using the 5000 generation this one is not something we use we use the xd 100 debug pro so we are okay and I will click next I think it is ready it's just hanging yeah it's not responding So I'm just going to wait for this to start and then I will pause the video because as I said this is also a very long installation. So you see now the installation has started. It will take a good amount of time. There's no point in actually having the video running all the time. So I'm going to pause the video and I'm going to come back when it's done. Right. See you soon. So the installation is finally complete. This entire dialog just shows that the installation is complete. And it says a reboot is required to complete this installation. And this is usually the case because it has installed drivers. And when you install drivers, typically you need to reinstall or rather reboot your system. So I will reboot my system a little later. But for now, let me just exit this. So we will create a desktop. There's a desktop shortcut. That's always easy to launch the application. Otherwise, you have to go into your start start menu and do so. So I would leave this checked. So with this, I will finish it. And let me just minimize my software, uh, my desktop. And you will see that this has now been installed. This is called Composer Studio. So this shortcut, let me just open this. This is called Composer Studio. Depending on the version, this appearance may change so of course depending on which version you're using it will look a little different typically they do try to add new features so it's always a good idea to upgrade to the latest version there are also a few other applications installed which are related to Blackhawk and that is because we chose the Blackhawk files as well right now again it's not totally I would say these we may not use that much they are more in terms of emulators and other facilities but it's always a good idea to have them now here you see it is asking for a workspace the workspace is where it is going to save all projects again you can choose anything you want 
but I would rather have everything in my F drive. Right. So I'm going to come down here, go to my F drive, go to CCS, and you see here, this is where it is installed everything. This is it. So I will I think I selected too much. Let me go back here again. F CCS and that's it. So I will choose this to be my folder. Right. And let me launch it. Again, the workspace directory can be anything. You can even have a separate directory, which could be something that you use for all your work. It's totally up to you. Right? This is just a user preference setting, rather. So I will not start programming it. I just want to show you what it is because I need to reboot my system. Remember, it did say you must reboot your system. So it is not advisable to connect up your microcontroller yet because you must restart to make sure all the drivers have been recognized. So yeah, depending on how fast or how slow your system is, it may take some time to start. And this is what we need to do. We have to wait. Code Composer Studio is generally a heavy software, so it does take some time. So here it is. This is what it looks like. I'm going to maximize it. So initially, it will always come to this getting started page, which usually gives you some helpful links as to how you can get started programming, right? So all this, of course, you can find all this information also on the website where you can has blocked. We don't need to please. So when you do get this information, that is Node.js has been blocked. This Node.js is an application within Code Composer Studio. Right, so it is asking for access to the internet, so you have to allow it access, otherwise, it won't work properly. It's just that I install, I always use Linux, so therefore, my Windows system is probably a bit of a mess. Anyway, let this be. So, now that this has been done. I will end this video because this video was largely about how to install Code Composer Studio, what we must choose, especially if you're using the Piccolo microcontroller kit. Of course, if you're using another kit, you may need to change your installation accordingly. So now that this is done, I will end this video and in the next video, we will get started with downloading Control Suite, right? Because Control Suite contains a lot of example projects and also starter files which we can use when we are programming a microcontroller. So if any of this didn't work or if you were trying something else and that didn't work or you have any other questions, please do post in the Q&A forum and I'll try to help you out. Otherwise, I will see you in the next lecture. Thank you so much for listening and goodbye for now. And also make sure you restart your computer after you finish installing Code Composer Studio. I'm going to do it after this video. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.